So hey guys, welcome back to Wood Heat Wednesday. This week I thought we'd take a deeper dive and look at splitting wedges. Talk a little bit about how they can help you out when it comes time to get your firewood split, as well as a little bit of maintenance that's involved in owning some of these. So the other day I was on Instagram and I noticed one of the very first photos I posted on there was our log splitter in the back of our wood pickup truck. Still in the crate and everything. That was three years ago. It's hard to believe how fast time has gone. Prior to us getting our log splitter, all our wood was pretty much put up by splitting by hand. And one of my secret weapons when it came time to getting those really nasty twisted pieces split was using some splitting wedges. So the nice part about wedges, it's really all about accuracy and you can really pinpoint where you're gonna place things. Instead of swinging a big heavy maul and hoping you're hitting the exact same spot every time, maybe you're just a little bit off, you're really focusing your energy directly on where that split's gonna happen. You can also take advantage of some of the natural checking that's already starting to happen on that log and then just use even just a small sledge and start pounding that thing through there. A little bit of extra power certainly doesn't hurt things, but it's definitely not required to start pounding wedges through uh, different logs. A lot of times I like working from the outside edges. It just seems like it splits a lot easier than if I try driving my wedge directly through the middle. And then also if you end up getting it really into a nasty piece and it starts getting stuck, it's a lot easier to get that out. One thing I did want to make note of is you have to be a little careful when you're selecting your item that you're going to use to drive that wedge. And a little sledge will work great for that. And Splitting mall a lot of times will have a surface on the back side that's meant for pounding that. But you don't want to go grab your American felling axe and start using the back of that. It's just not built for that and will really do a lot of damage to your axe. So a quick glimpse at my split mall. This is actually one I've had for a long time. One of my favorite ones and a relatively inexpensive mall. Um, this is a true temper one and on the back you'll note that there's an area here for pounding wedges. Uh, not a really a bad split mall, especially for the price. It does have a plastic handle, so it's not the most sexiest thing out there, but the nice part is it does have the capability when this plastic handle finally breaks, and that's really what I've been waiting for, uh, then I have the flexibility to at least put a nice hickory wood handle on there at some point. But so far, this plastic handle has held up very well. So a lot of times you can get these wedges, 10, 20 bucks at your local hardware store. Uh, if you keep your eye out as garage sale season starts approaching, a lot of times you can find some old wedges there. People just aren't splitting wood as much as they used to, and you can get some older wedges made with some real high quality American steel for a great deal over there. A couple bucks and uh, just a little bit of maintenance work and you're back in action. So I definitely recommend owning at least bare minimum two sets of wedges, if not three. I have three wedges, uh, pretty sentimental wedges to me here. Um, but there's been definitely times where I've pounded a wedge in, got it stuck, start pounding another one in to try to get myself out of that situation, got that one stuck, and then I've used the third wedge to get things undone. So I've had a couple of close calls there. Uh, for maintenance here, uh, you can see these wedges here um, are starting to get a little bit of mushrooming happening here. And this is a little bit of a, a dangerous spot. One, they're sharp edges. So if you're handling these without gloves, you can end up potentially cutting yourself a little bit. And then as you're pounding those wedges, some of those chips can come off and potentially bounce back at your face or other parts of your body and cause a little damage. So these wedges are going on their third generation. These were my wife's father's. So of course it heated him and it heated my wife and now the granddaughter here. Uh, so if you do a little basic maintenance on these things, take care of them, these things will last you a really a long time. You can see this one's definitely overdue. Uh, a lot of stuff can happen in here. But like I mentioned, we're going to clean that up and we're also going to come in here and do a nice um, sharpening on this. Uh, having a nice sharp edge on these really helps a lot. If you have a dull edge and you're trying to get these things started, it tends to want to bounce a little bit more. Having a nice sharp edge, it just seems to stick in there. It makes life a whole lot easier. I'm not an expert on, on getting nice sharp edges and, and really into sharpening. I, I can get the job done. And generally what I'm shooting for when I'm trying to sharpen this thing up is one is I'm looking to take a lot of the nicks out of the blade. I'm also 
shooting to put a convex edge on this. Uh, if you're not someone that sharpens a lot of knives and, and don't really quite know what that means, I mean, think of kind of a, a flat type grind. You got that V that's happening there. And with a convex edge, it, it sort of cuts in and it has a little bit of a steeper uh, edge. So there's a little bit more material there behind it, as well as um, once that thing gets started into the log and starts splitting, it's not actually the the edge that's what's driving it through, it's actually the wedge is doing most of the work. So I've, I've done a couple different approaches when it comes time to getting some of this stuff cleaned up. I've taken it on to belt grinders, and I think honestly the easiest method that I have personally found is using an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Coming in, cut that off pretty quickly, and then after that, uh, come in with either a flapper disc or a grinding disc and kind of smooth things out a little bit. Sledge. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.